Hey everybody, welcome to the Brute Neighbors podcast, the show where we talk about anything and everything and review it and do witty banter and shit. I'm Philip, and as always, I'm joined by... Um, Did you forget Seth. your name? <laughs> Question Who are mark? You? I... Seth, or are you? <laughs> who, who, who am I? Who am I? Uh, so I, I may or may not be joined by Seth. I don't know who this man Maybe. is. Maybe. He doesn't know. Who's to say? I mean, you you really don't. Do any of us truly know who we are? Are we human? Or are we, are we dancer? Human? Good start. On, All right, so on next today. week's episode. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, today we are talking about uh, breakfast foods in general. Ooh, we are talking about the hit musical Hamilton. Ow, ow. Now my on Disney shot. Plus. No, it's my shot, and I'm not throwing it away. And as always, a third mystery subject this week, given by Seth. I don't know what the hell it is. I'm oh, Philip, and terrified. Philip is not ready for it. It is, uh, oh, we're, we're, it's going to be gone with the wind. Um, <laughs> we're going to sit here for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to sit here for four hours, and I'm going to make Philip watch Gone with the Wind. It's not happening. You, you mean The Martian? We're watching The Martian again. The Mar- I'm going to... The surprise is The Martian. <laughs> Gone with The Martian. Wonderful. Let's do the thing, man. Uh, yeah. Breakfast foods. What's your... What, what, what is your go-to breakfast? If you're like, you can oh. make whatever the fuck you want. What, what is your go-to? Okay, so... Well, it really... It depends on whether I'm going for a sweet breakfast or... Uh, uh, a savory breakfast. Uh, oh well. Oh, I. I mean, and I'm. I'm thinking even deeper than that. Like, I. I. I wasn't even considering cereals. Um. I. I. I guess I would have to say for like go to number one. If I could eat it every single day, would probably be waffle. Ha- well, waffles, but specifically, Waffle House's peanut butter waffle. Mm-hmm. which is is just their waffle but with uh peanut butter chips sprinkled on top it's just uh i could eat that every day see weirdly enough I, i'm not a, like i love sweet foods for some reason like i've never been huge on like breakfast sweet foods like i've yeah like, i like pancakes and waffles but like they're never like my first choice like if if my like if I could have any breakfast, you know, whatever, anytime, whenever I wanted, omelets are my go-to. I fucking love omelets with all my heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess that's more like on the savory side, yeah. especially depending on what you put in it. Uh, and like, like I'll go to like IHOP. Like I love IHOP. I think we've talked about IHOP and Waffles on the podcast before. Uh, but uh, like I, I, I love going to IHOP and being super duper fat <laughs> and getting like the omelet and then the side of pancakes, which is three fucking full ass pancakes. Mm-hmm. You're just eating a you're already eating a full ass giant omelet meal and three, you know, just slices of sweet bread and you drizzle a bunch of sweet sugar on it. It's like it's horrible for you, but it's amazing. That's probably the mm-hmm. only time I really eat pancakes is like with omelets or something. So it's only when I'm being super duper fat do I <laughs> eat pancakes. Well my, I mean my other like num I, I have three number one breakfasts just depending on what sort of a mood I'm in. The first mm-hmm. one that sweet breakfast being a waffle. But also I I just re I, I have this set meal of eggs, hash browns and toast. And the scrambled eggs specifically. I, I had never had eggs before like three years ago. What? Ever? Yeah. No, ever. Because How? for whatever reason, my family just never had eggs. We we never ate eggs. And I had I never had them until I went to It was, no, it was last year. It was last March, because I can remember the first time I ever had them. What Uh, the fuck? How how did you live, like, what, 21 years without ever having eggs? Yeah. That is baffling, because eggs, to me, have always been just, like, my entire life, a staple of my diet. Like, Mm -hmm. literally, like, because, like, we had um, chickens growing up that I had to take care of. hate chickens. Terrible creatures. But... 
uh, you know, we always had eggs. And like, there were times where literally for like five days in a row, my only meal would be eggs. Like, cause like, mm-hmm. it's easy to make. It's all we had. Yeah. I would just make eggs. And like, so like eggs are like, if I were to like average out, <laughs> like the, the, like the meal that I've had the most in my life has probably at least involved eggs in some way. Cause like, I've just always well, had eggs in my life. But th- they are such a staple food. Like they, they have been so essential to, I mean, the average person's diet today and the average person's diet for the last, oh, a couple thousand years. Mm-hmm. It, 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 so, so it is, I, I can understand that it being strange when someone doesn't have that experience. Yeah. It, it's such an easy source of protein too. It, and it's, I mean, it's so basic. Especially because, like, you're pescatarian, but you like you can only not eat eggs if you're vegan, right? Right. So yeah, so even even those vegetarians eat eggs too. Yeah, like you could have eaten eggs, you just 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 didn't. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So what was the the kicker that made you finally try eggs? I I was I was at a diner, like I was I I had I had I was at a convention in St. Louis, and the group of people I was with just stopped at this this rinky dink dive of, of a diner and i was like okay i want i want a uh you know good old-fashioned uh, american brunch um and so i got eggs uh like home fries and and toast and i i was like why have i not been eating this the whole time because as it turns out, and I'm I'm a super picky eater. I love eggs, and I don't I don't know why. I can't describe it. Eggs are just. I mean, one good thing about eggs, even like I don't even know why I would say they just a straight egg tastes like. But the cool yeah. thing about eggs is like you can put, you can make them a million different ways. Put a million different things mm-hmm. with them. Like, oh yeah. You can make them with butter. You make them. You can add milk in them to like make them more fluffy. You can. Uh, cheese you know i i love spinach and feta omelets they're one of my favorites you can put all kinds of meat in there if you're a meat eater there's you know over easy there's uh sunny side up there's hard boiled eggs deviled eggs there's a bajillion different ways to eat eggs just an incredibly versatile food Mm -hmm. and so like i think that's just like part of the appeal is like even if you don't like one way of cooking eggs there's a bajillion like that that's always weird to me like I know a couple people that just hate eggs and I just I don't understand it because there's so many different ways to 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 present them and cook them that Mm -hmm. drastically alter the texture taste all of it so like just flat out saying you don't like eggs is kind of baffling to me Mm -hmm. well my 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 third number one breakfast the the third one that I would eat every day uh special k Special K with milk and and just plain Special K too. I don't need anything huh. special. That's your, is that your favorite cereal, Special K? Yeah. Yes. Huh. So I, I I don't I don't need any berries or chocolate bits in it or anything. Just like see, I'm I, a Captain Crunch man through and through. I, I love me the Captain. Well, and I don't get it either because like I mean I used to be super into sugary cereals, but I think there's just something about the texture of special k particularly when it's been in the milk for just the right amount of time like just enough that it's not dry but that it hasn't gotten soggy yet it's just like it it has that addicting sort of crunch that like a potato chip has you know <laughs> but like uh-huh. it, it's it's I, I don't feel salty and greasy afterwards yeah see i i can't really do a lot of the healthy cereals like i don't necessarily do like the full-on like like cookie crisp cereals that's a bit too much for me yeah but like the only like healthy cereal healthy-ish cereal i like i actually like raisin bran surprisingly which i know that's not a super popular cereal that's like uh, a, a cereal I've, I've... like 50 year olds eat but mm-hmm. it's I've nice because like a... people like that really yeah Vroom, vroom. Who was that? Uh, somebody decided they just want to do burnouts all around the neighborhood. Oh, nice. Join them. <laughs> Honestly. That's a uh-huh. special guest on the podcast. 
A bicycle gang, a motorcycle gang. <laughs> On today's this, episode, Seth joins a biker gang. The, that, that's the second top. That's the surprise topic. <laughs> it's like, oh no, they're here early. <laughs> <laughs> the guys, I'm sorry, we got to talk about fucking eggs and Hamilton for a minute, and then we'll get to you. Well, luckily, the bikers are are huge Broadway fans. So, um, that, see the. See, they they were hoping though that we we're gonna talk about cats. You know, they yes. they were like, oh, Hamilton. Nah, I'm more of a cats guy. The, the, they're more old fashioned. You know, <laughs> we we are going to talk about cats someday on this podcast. Be oh, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, but anyways, <laughs> breakfast, breakfast with bikers. It's like a yeah, breakfast well, at no. Tiffany's, but with I, bikers <laughs> and with less racism. <laughs> but no, I I have heard a number of people say that th- that they really like raisin bran and they they can't explain why well it's weird because like you feel healthy for eating yeah because it's just fucking like fiber and it's just it's just fiber and then raisins which like raisins are typically kind of gross but like Mm -hmm. it's just something about that blend like together and then like we pour the milk in it's surprisingly sweet for what it is Mm -hmm. and like and you feel like you're not destroying your body (laughs) Which, like, maybe you are. I think it does still have some sugar in it, I think. But Unlike Captain Crunch, where it feels like I'm making my mouth bleed. <laughs> I think you're eating cat. We've had this conversation before at some point. Oh, and I mean, I, Captain I, I love wrong, Captain so. Crunch. How do, I think how Captain, Captain Crunch, Crunch is make great. your mouth bleed? That's insane. I think you have a broken mouth. You need <laughs> help. Uh, Seek medical attention. Viewers, please, please comment in the comments. Uh, that w- whether or not you agree with my feeling that Captain Crunch makes your mouth bleed. No, I think you just need help. I've, like, I, I haven't been with Dennis in like a year and a half. And like, I, I had Captain Crunch like a week ago. It didn't make my fucking mouth bleed. Um, <laughs> also, please uh, comment in the uh, comments whether or not you think uh, Philip is a loser. Um, for not going to the dentist? For, for not going. Well, yeah. Uh, but- <laughs> Separately from the fact that he doesn't go to the dentist, Up and in general. then again, with that in 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 mind, taking that into account, a, a, a double count of loser. It's like a shot, double the dose. Yes. Um. But anyways, yeah, I fucking love eggs. Captain Crunch is great. That's probably my favorite cereal. It's my go-to. One cereal I never liked very much. I never got the appeal of Fruity Pebbles. That's just like pure okay. sugar, yeah. and the texture is weird. So I just never. No. I I see that because I always wanted to like fruity pebbles, but every time I had them, they I I do remember they never lived up. To yeah, because like I remember like I would f- almost feel bad that I didn't like them because like yeah, usually like when I was a kid, my parents were like, oh, pick a healthy cereal, or whatever. But they're like, okay, now like you know we got you a sugary cereal. I'm like, yay, and it was fruity pebbles, and I was like, fuck, <laughs> like you couldn't couldn't get me fucking the Reese's cereal. You couldn't get me fucking Cookie Crisp. Like, they're disgusting, but also in a good way. Fruity Pebbles is just disgusting straight up. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it doesn't even taste like, like Cookie Crisp, it still tastes like, it, it's, mm-hmm. still, it's just little cookies. But Fruity Pebbles, it just, it tastes like sugar syrup. Oh, now growing up, man, Lucky Charms. Lucky, Lucky Charms was, that was it. That, that was it. See, Lucky Charms, the only thing where it lost me is that the marshmallows were so much better than the, like, yeah. little grain parts where, like, you just end up picking out the marshmallows and then it's well, just like, you're yeah. left with the dry shit and it's just like, well, I don't care anymore. Well, yeah, it, it, it was weird because when you're a kid, you kind of just you go all in for the marshmallows because you're you're trying to get that that high that infusion of sugar as quickly as possible. Gotta get that high, man. Get lucky charm <laughs> high, man. Gotta but get over that the... rainbow. <laughs> um, but I mean, the older I got, the more I appreciated those bits, uh, like like the grain. I've parts. never appreciated the bits in Lucky Charm. Oh well, because if I ate too much of the marshmallows at one point it, it it was it was too sweet it was too it, it was like it, it was kind of very similar to my feelings about cake how uh when i when i was real young 
I would just go straight for the icing and, and shovel the icing into my mouth. Cause that was, that was the straight sugar. That was the, uh, you know, the rush, you know, yeah. the thrill. but as I got older, I was like, I cannot eat straight icing. I need something to balance it out. I need something to ground me yeah. so that I can. Yeah, it's like when you're, through. it's like when you're doing heroin, you need to make sure you have some weed. Too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, it out. I'm so happy you're on board with me. <laughs> uh, sure, when you're injecting that needle in your fucking arm, you know, your needle Actually, full of marshmallows. Next week's episode is heroin. Oh, beautiful. I love it. I love me some fucking heroin. Hey, kids, Ooh. don't do heroin. You can do some drugs, not heroin. I, I hope you kids are excited for uh, Brute Neighbors Episode 9, Biker Gangs and the Opioid Epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some overlap. Uh, well, There's probably yeah. some overlap. <laughs> oh, God. So breakfast. <laughs> um, I, I will say, I'm about to be disowned as a Southerner, which is fine. No. Uh, I never got the appeal of grits. I... That was another thing that I did not have until the last year. I had never I, had grits before last year. See, I didn't have it much growing up. Like, I don't think I had it for the first time until I was, like, a senior in high school. Yeah. So, like, I didn't have, like, I guess the nostalgia for it that it seems like people have. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just don't get the appeal. Like, it's just, like, it's worse oatmeal. And, like... Well, and I'm going to be honest. I've I've had grits sold to me more at, like fancy restaurants than ever at at just sort of yeah it's like the it's like a weird like almost like country club association yeah like the like fancier southerners with a little money like it's like oh yes i would like the grits with the i don't know why i'm 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 trying to to (laughs) i don't know why these southerners have french accents (laughs) i'm trying to you know trick myself into uh acting like my family has lived in a, on a farm sometime in the last six generations. Um. It's yeah, grits are weird, and I also there's like some there's this big argument of like oh you put sugar in them or like oh no you need it like with like cheese or like some other. It's like I've, I've tried it multiple different ways. I just I can't get on board with it. They're like yep. I can buy with oatmeal sometimes, but I'm not a huge oatmeal guy. And mm-hmm. grits are just like all the bad things about oatmeal. And none yeah. of the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I well, so something that I've always kind of felt barred from with with breakfast foods is I feel like there's a lot of emphasis put on like sausage or or bacon or that sort. Well, particularly bacon. Bacon's just like so. Bacon's huge. Yeah, it's literally uh, from a marketing campaign from like the '60s, but. You know, we were brainwashed into loving bacon, but damn it, I do love bacon. You know, being being vegetarian then and then being pescatarian, I, I it, I've never had that sort of association. And like when I hey, make my order, <laughs> what? That's a pigs or fish. You can eat pig. Yeah. Well, when, when I when I like make my order at restaurants where I'm, oh, uh, yeah, I'll have eggs and hash browns. A lot of times people just assume I, I want bacon too and I have to be like, No, I I I really don't. I, I, I do enjoy bacon and sausage. I definitely prefer sausage over bacon. See, um, I well and I mean I I've, I've never had a veggie equivalent of bacon, but sausage I've I've had veggie sausage a ton and just th- there is that distinct like sp- spicy and i don't mean spicy as in like hot i mean spicy as in like there's a distinct flavor yeah that, that just that, that that distinct flavor of sausage just i find so repulsive really yeah see i i, I love sausage it's very good since you don't since you can't contribute i'm just gonna bust out these quick meat breakfast facts that no one can contest me on the best form of sausage (laughs) link forms best way to cook bacon kind of crispy but not not burnt chewy bacon is trash um ham is eh. uh let's see what else we got what else we got uh oh chicken for breakfast fucking weird like chicken omelets are the most disgusting thing in the world to me you're literally 
taking like the baby form of an animal and putting the adult form of an animal in the baby form of, the, of an animal. That's disgusting. Chicken omelets are disgusting. I would like to take what Philip just said and uh, posit this. Meat is gross and our uh, our current uh, methods of, of consuming meat or current habits of consuming meat are unsustainable and so I think Philip should just feel bad for everything he's just said. As Man, as if I like I actually flesh. I love that <laughs> mm. God, just sizzle it up. Oh yeah, you, you hear it sizzle? You can pretend it's the animal crying on pain. <laughs> 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 I couldn't I couldn't keep that bit up. I couldn't. <laughs> I cracked. <laughs> Peter's gonna, you know, <laughs> get our podcast pulled. Um, I, I do agree though. We how, how we handle animals is not great, but it, you know, unfortunately, like meat is just so fucking cheap. Like it's really hard to afford being vegetarian. Yeah. I've tried it. It's mm-hmm. just like it's hard to to afford being vegetarian. Like without like just eating fucking like like to have anything that actually like tastes good and isn't just no real nutrients uh, that that aren't just like empty and don't have any sort of real substance it's expensive um uh, philip i i i i I don't mean to cut you off here but i'm i'm so happy you are sharing this here because next week's podcast is our food sustainability episode (laughs) Along with heroin and biker, <laughs> all together, it's all connected. We're gonna weave an elaborate tale. It's like that uh that meme from Always Sunny with Charlie and the wires, like connecting all these <laughs> it's, pictures. It's all connected. It's all connected. The biker gangs, they do heroin because food isn't sustainable. <laughs> sponsored by, sponsored by PETA. <laughs> oh God, let's see what are the breakfast things that we got. Um. I've never understood, I mean, like, I get it, like, like, just fruit as a breakfast, and that's it, like, that's, like, I don't, I wouldn't call that a meal, like, if you're just eating a banana, like, I wouldn't say you're well, eating breakfast, you're just eating a banana. I, I would, uh, well, see, the thing with that is, the, the, I wouldn't say it's a good breakfast, but it's definitely just something easy, like, if I'm running out the door, and I'm like, ooh, I want to feel like, I've actually eaten something to sustain myself for the rest of the day. I'll just grab so a banana. Like a snack, though. Like it's a, it's a, like that's not a meal. Like I wouldn't call that yeah. breakfast. I wouldn't eat a fucking, I don't know, a fucking graham cracker and say that's dinner. Like I, I, I would just like to uh, put this on the record here that I have heard Philip say he's eaten just about that or less <laughs> and call it dinner. So. <laughs> I think jokingly, usually, though. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I ate, technically. <laughs> right, sometimes I just don't eat. There's nothing wrong with that. But I wouldn't say that's a meal. I just didn't eat. <laughs> ah. Sometimes you just forget to eat or are unable to. Well, before I Food start crying. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, same with, like, health bars and shit. It's just, like, if, if, if your fucking meal, quote-unquote, if your breakfast is just a fucking, like, granola bar, that's just a, you, you just ate a granola bar. Like, I say this as someone who doesn't eat breakfast and I usually don't eat lunch. I usually eat one meal a day. Yeah. Like, just fucking say, oh, I ate a granola bar. Like, don't, I don't know why I'm, I'm so adamant about this. It's a weird thing to be so passionate about, but it's just like, it's yeah. weird. It's weird. It, it's well, weird. Like, it's not breakfast. You my, say granola bar. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do kind of get where you're, you're coming from because I know growing up there, I, I got to a point where, I mean, I, I grew up in a family where when I was young, uh, my my parents went out of their way to prepare full meals, and you know we we sat at the dining room table every single evening for dinner, and then I got to an age where we kind we we just sort of stopped doing that, and yeah. it it was sort of fend for yourselves uh, for dinner, and so I would I I would be like, uh, what 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 do we have? I I try and figure out what I want for dinner and my mother would would go list off like oh well you know we've got some apples uh you know <laughs> it's like a meal. It's an apple. 
I, I just, I could not wrap my mind around that. My, my mother genuinely thought that it was that, that like, oh, I'm, I, I want dinner. I'm, I'm going to have a piece of fruit. Yeah. Like that's not filling. That's not sustain. That's, that's not, that is food on sustainability. It's all, it's all coming um, full circle here. Full circle. Uh, you know, you can't be a good biker if you don't get enough to eat. Then if you don't get enough to eat, you get depressed well, and you turn to heroin. I, I think going back a little bit, I, I think you also brought something up that is pretty uh, significant is uh, of all the meals, breakfast is definitely the most optional. Like it, it has become the most optional in today's society. Because I mean, when we're kids, we're, we're, we have it hammered into us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah. That is the day, uh, the meal that gets you started. It gets you the energy for doing everything else you're going to do. I never eat breakfast. Like maybe I'll eat it once every week or every two weeks. I, I, I think you're the, uh, the same way, but most people I know, at least that are our age are the same way. See, I only really eat breakfast foods, never at breakfast. I can, yeah. I, I, I think I can count on one hand the times I've been to a Waffle House or an IHOP before, Four yeah, but like before 4 p.m. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it's usually a dinner or like a late dinner kind of thing. Like it's not, I never like wake up and be like, all right, time for some Waffle House. Or like, all right, time for some eggs. Unless like I'm doing it for like my meal for the day. Yeah. Like it's not like, I'm making breakfast and then I'm going to go do whatever. And then I'm going to go make lunch. Like, it's just not, it's not a thing I do. And like you said, like, I don't know a lot of people that do like have a full breakfast every day or even like more than once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. Like at most you might grab a pop tart while going out the door, which pop tarts are solid. I like pop tarts. Oh yeah. They're just, they're terrible for you. But, uh, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're tasty. They're scrumptious. S'mores pop tarts are the best pop tarts. You heard it here first. Um, cookie dough pop tarts, objectively oh, right. the best. Yeah, okay. Uh, have you had those? Uh, I might be getting confused. Wasn't there a red velvet pop tart, or am I thinking red velvet Oreos? No, I think there, there. I think there was, think was a red, red velvet, velvet pop tart. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I never it. had it. Um, I want to say I tried it, and it was okay. Yeah, I can see that. Those are my thoughts on red velvet pop. I mean, it, it would. It would. I imagine it would just be kind of like a chocolate pop tart with white icing, maybe some white cream inside. White for red velvet? Yeah. Red red velvet is is, is red. Where are you getting this white from? Well, I'm I'm thinking that like the the breading of the pop tart, the tart, would be the the red velvet. That would make sense, right? Well, red velvet cake is all red all the way through. Yeah, but like, so so, what sort of a filling would you put in there? More red velvet. Oh, <laughs> what? Just your red velvet cream, cream of red velvet. Go die, Philip. Oh, huh? well, that's rude. Don't be rude. Don't don't actually die, Philip. How would you feel if I did right now? I I would I mean I'd probably spend the rest of my life in in blaming myself and and with paranoia. Um, like oh god, I have the power of the death what, note. What death power? Note what power do I have? Oh god, I've said it and it came true. But anyways, so yeah, that's let's see. Do we have any other closing thoughts on breakfast? Potato um, taquito is is good. Donuts. Donuts are solid. Bagels. I've never, I've ne- donuts for breakfast always weirded me out, honestly. That's too much. Although I will I, say, I, I had, it was disgusting, but in the best way possible, like a donut breakfast sandwich. Mm-hmm. Like it's, like I probably like shaved off three years off my lifespan by eating it. But dear yeah. God, was it tasty. Dunkin' Donuts is, is the supreme breakfast I like place. Crispy cream. Well, Okay, so Waffle House, I think I like Waffle House more than Dunkin' Donuts, but I will, if I, I'm choosing some place to go to breakfast the most, it's going to be Dunkin' Donuts. Like for actual breakfast, like yeah. in the morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Because, I mean, just the donuts are awesome. The coffee, in my opinion, is awesome. Bagels, awesome. Bagels are the only place south of the Mason-Dixon, or uh, Dunkin' Donuts is the only place south of the Mason-Dixon line where I've been able to get a decent bagel. And their sandwiches are just, like, really good. I have had their sandwiches before. Like, uh, they're, they're pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, breakfast is good. I, yeah. I am pro breakfast, breakfast foods. Uh, I, again, I don't really actually eat breakfast at the proper time. You're, you know, supposedly supposed to eat it, but yeah. breakfast foods, all good. Eggs, bacon, sausage, uh, toast, jelly, jelly and toast. Yum. Mm. Jelly and biscuits. Yum. What's the best jelly or jam? Great. Absolutely. Oh, uh, specifically Welch's. I, I don't mess around with any other type of jelly. Did you say that? I remember when we were shooting my short film, you got the other kind of, of like you got another brand and like, Smuckers, and it, it wasn't, Smuckers. wasn't good. But you chose that. You you betrayed Welch. I I thought it I thought it was gonna be the same, and it wasn't. <laughs> well, that that's the reason why I have such uh, such strong feelings about it because of my short film. You were betrayed I, by Smuckers. I was wronged. Yeah. Uh, I also like strawberry jam and jelly, but uh, grape is okay. definitely my favorite. No. Yeah. Blueberry is solid too. I don't think um, I've ever had blueberry jelly. It's not as common, but it's, 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 it's good. I enjoy it. I've, I've had uh, black currant jelly before. That's black what? Uh, black currant. It's a lot more popular over in Europe, even mm-hmm. though I, I, think, I think it's just as common over here. Don't quote me on that. But I'm quoting you on, it, it's on the it's, record. Yeah, it's interesting. It's fine. Grape grape jelly will always reign supreme. Okay, so I'm pro most breakfast foods. The breakfast foods that I am pro, I am extremely pro. But, you know, I don't know if I can say that I am pro breakfast foods more than any other kind of food. Because I just like food in general. I, if we're going to go by, like, types of food, like, which is weird that, like, breakfast is considered its, like, own category, like, you would, like, consider, like, Mexican food or Italian food. Because like, breakfast yeah. is kind of, can be, theoretically, anything. Yeah. yeah it's, like, it, it's kind of become its own, like, genre of food. Yeah. In some way, in the same that you would consider, you know, Italian, Indian, Mexican food. So it's interesting. Breakfast. But, yeah, no, I... Uh, you know, I actually, I, I studied abroad in breakfast for a little bit. Um, <laughs> did, did you learn a lot there? Um, not really. I, I slacked off, got drunk <laughs> in breakfast. I'm trying to think sites. of a, I'm trying to think of a good breakfast pun. Uh, I, I slept in too much. I, 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 I don't wow, have it. You failed. You failed me. I'm leaving this in the podcast. Just shame you <laughs> just as, as a as a <laughs> monument to my shame <laughs> you couldn't come up with a single breakfast joke i am ashamed i'm cracking down on you like you would crack an egg that was bad but at least i tried uh, well i was i was with you when you were like i'm cracking down on you and then you had to add like an egg and i <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make sure the audience is following along man. Uh, <laughs> Jokes are funny when you explain them. It's, it's, it's how that works. It's a, it's a law of comedy. Pro breakfast, except grits. I'm anti-grits. I'm going to say it. That's right. I, I, I don't have any feelings one way or the other towards grits. They're just, yeah. I, I don't get the appeal. All right, boys and girls. It's the, the subject you've all been waiting for. The hit musical that everyone's been talking about. Everyone loves and adores and just throws praise upon Cats 21. Cats. Cats 2019. <laughs> <laughs> the true masterpiece. Amazing songs. Amazing just the visual effects were just Okay, I hate mind- I hate that our minds went to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's it's oh fucking cats, man. Fucking we are literally, literally, literally the, the cinematic masterpiece of our time, of our generation. Oh, of all time. Yeah. You know, fuck Citizen Kane, man. Cats, 2019. Yeah. Look, all I'm saying is, uh, you know, 
cats had had cats. How many how many cats were in uh, Citizen Kane? If you can show me one cat in Citizen Kane, then I, I, you know what? I'll I'll jump off a bridge or something. <laughs> You're very very down tonight, Seth. Jesus, very dark. I'm, I'm supposed to be the dark one, Seth. What's I'm, going on here? I am I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. Fair play. As you jump off bridges. It's I, I don't know. I'm just really into the rush. <sighs> the thrill. I'm smiling <laughs> as I go down into the abyss. So anyway, Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilcat. <laughs> There's a million things I haven't. Cat. Alright, this joke's dead. Uh, just like Hamilton. Hey oh. Um, spoilers for history. <laughs> um, yeah, Alexander Hamilton. Um, I, at first, you know. I thought you were talking about like the play, and I was like, "What do you mean? It's more popular than ever." <laughs> hey, hey, Seth. Um, yeah. I just I thought you should know. Uh, Hamilton's based on a real historical figure. It's not what? fiction. It's 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 based off of historical fact. They may have taken some slight liberties here and there, but it's a it's a relatively factual piece. Wait, I'm, I'm waiting for it. Wait for it. Eh, I am the one thing in life I can't control. <sighs> <laughs> that was our podcast, everyone. Thank you for listening. Uh, tune in next week uh, after I've made that <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> Whoa! What a what a what a turnaround! What a surprise! <laughs> I get it. I I am the dark and gritty one. I was born in the darkness. You merely adopted it. Uh, yeah, no Hamilton. Uh, yeah, just came what? on to Disney what? Plus. Yeah. What were your? Oh, by the way, spoilers for Hamilton. <laughs> Fuck! You know what? I am always very adamant about giving spoiler warnings. It's fucking history. Go read a also, fucking history you know, book. Also, uh, you know, spoilers listen. about, um, you know, the the founding of the United States of America. And, spoilers, it, it exists um, for now. The, the first few uh, presidential administrations. Hey, spoilers, uh, George Washington isn't alive anymore. Okay, well, well I didn't know that, so <laughs> I, I need you to stop. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, no, it's a... So I have known about Hamilton for a very long time. I mean, the world has. It fucking blew up. Well, but like, I remember I, I, I remember watching the news as a kid and it, like it was a local Philadelphia story about oh yeah, there there's this uh this young musician who uh is, is planning on writing a, a rap musical Mm-hmm. about alexander hamilton and Everyone's i like, that's I, weird <laughs> i thought that was extremely strange i yeah i didn't think it was gonna take off well no actually it's it's strange because after i heard that on the news i got on facebook and i i commented on it i was like was like i'm so happy this is a thing and i i hope people realize that it's stupid to take uh, Alexander Hamilton off of the $10 bill. Cause I, I being a history buff, I've always been a big Alexander Hamilton fan. You and Hamilton. yeah, well, I mean like I, I literally did it before it was cool. Um, Are you really I, trying to be a Hamilton hipster? Well, oh I, my no, God. I, I, once a year, that will sh- pop up on my Facebook memories, and I'll just have to like send it out there and be like, uh, check the timestamp a year before Hamilton came out. And, uh, Hamilton well, and hipster. they, I mean, th- that that is what happened. That came out. People got into Alexander Hamilton. They were like, oh, okay, we're not going to replace him on the $10 bill anymore. Yeah. So that, I mean, it really that the release of that musical had tangible effects on the way people treated him as a historical figure. It's true, and I, I do like though that the the musical is very like it does romanticize him. Yeah, but like it does still blatantly both show and like straight up says it like 
he had some pretty big flaws. Like mm-hmm. he had some very flawed characteristics, and that even uh, his character at least uh, acknowledged. Like like he there'd be times where he would like go to Bird before you know Bird shot him. Spoilers. Uh, and like be like, hey Bird, like what would you do? I, I know I can be headstrong and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like he they did they did a very good job of balancing his character well, and like I don't know. Uh, you know, because I haven't done as, as much research as I necessarily should have. A hundred percent how uh, historically accurate it is, but to my knowledge, like he, oh yeah, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda did was very, you know, uh, went out of his way to be as historically accurate as possible while still telling a cohesive narrative. The 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 only th- things I would say do not follow historical accuracy are just sort of romanticizations and like the, making things up for the sake of plot um mm-hmm. but like all, all of the historical events are things that actually happened yeah it's uh yeah it's a wonderful musical i remember like way before like i only just saw it recently because I, I i didn't have money to fucking go see it on broadway yeah it's fucking what thousand dollar tickets and shit oh like yeah that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Well, the, I, I, I would never, and I, I hate saying this because I'm a huge supporter of the arts, and I, 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 I love theater too. I, I would never pay to to go see something on Broadway. The, I, I just I would, but like not like nothing more than like I would pay for like a concert ticket. Like yeah, too shit. Like when you're talking like you know eight hundred dollar tickets. And yeah. Like, yeah, no, yeah. like that's insane. And then like, th- no, like if it's a huge show that I really wanted to see, I could maybe at a at the most see paying like a hundred. Yeah, but like I, I, anything I more than that, that is ridiculous. But yeah, like so I mean I didn't see it. Although I, I did see a bootleg of it way back in the day. Like I, like mm. the buzz was first really picking up, and like I heard the 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 soundtrack a thousand times because uh. A very dear friend of mine would always give me rides around places and like we'd hang out a lot and she always had hamilton playing in the car uh because she was just obsessed with it for a hot second and so i i also heard the album a million times yeah uh, and then you know it's, it's a great album uh great great music well, and it's really neat the way that hamilton is is set up because it, it's really it really plays more like an opera because that there there are almost none, if any, uh, spoken lines. Like it is all musical. It, it is all the soundtrack. Yeah. And so if you're listening to the soundtrack, you are you get getting the whole story. Yeah. The whole story. Oh, yeah. um, the the visuals definitely add a a deeper layer or a, a, to to the experience of viewing it. I love us a good turntable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate how much theater nerds freak out about turntables. It makes me smile when I hear like theater <laughs> nerds like gush about turntables. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like, oh, like, oh, like the, the, how excited people get. It's like, oh, did you see the, they had a turntable. Like, that's awesome. I, uh, for, for me, it was really strange finally sitting down and listening to the whole soundtrack because I, I, I had just heard different songs from different places forever. And there were some songs that I was really into and would play over and over again. But it was still another three years after I started getting into the music before I actually sat down and made myself experience it in its entirety. Um, and I, I regret w- waiting that long because, it I mean, it's an amazing story. It it uh, it's a true story. I I really appreciate how like I mean obviously Hamilton's the main character. No duh, it's called Hamilton. Yeah. But I really really appreciate how much of a focus they do give Burr. Yes. And like he is like he's the antagonist, but like they really don't really paint him as a villain. Mm-hmm. Like they they paint him as a flawed character, like a flawed well, person for sure. But so they do the same with Hamilton. I I would go so far as to say Aaron Burr is the most relatable character in the entire play. Uh, Because as much as we, uh, well, 
as much as we might like to say it, and this does depend on the kind of person you are, we are not all Hamiltons. Most of us are are very... Yeah, mm-hmm. I, well, I, I in particular identify a lot with Burr in that, you know, that, that sort of very cautious, very like, don't do something until you know what's what what you're doing, what's going to happen. See, I honestly, in that regard, like I, I kind of do, I think, I honestly wish I related to Burr more, but I feel like I do relate to Hamilton in that like, sometimes I'll just do shit and just like, like, fuck it, might as well do something and mm-hmm. like, and see what happens. Like, I, I, I can be very headstrong and I'm very all about like, gotta, gotta do the thing. So well, the, there's this one line and th- this is probably my, my favorite, one of my favorite lines in the musical, um, in my favorite song of the musical. Uh, and, and, and it's just Hamilton doesn't hesitate. He exhibits no restraint. He takes and he takes and he takes and he keeps winning anyway. And, and th- that one always got to me because I, I am a very reserved person. I am a very cautious person. And I've spent my entire life seeing more headstrong and, and more uh, braver people go out and, and you know, try and... and benefit and uh, I've always I, I that that's the line where I, I well I mean that's the song where you really understand Burr but just sort of that 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 pang of uh, of envy for uh the go-getters are you the bird of my Hamilton are you gonna shoot me in a duel? I, yes yes I am <laughs> um <laughs> That'll be great. So I'll 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 make it, and then I'll burn my own career to the ground, well, and then we'll get in a, into a duel. I I thought it was so interesting to use Burr as the antagonist mm-hmm. in the play too, because well, I mean, I, it kind of had to be Burr because Burr is the one that kills him. Whoa, spoilers! But, I mean, he, his arch nemesis is Thomas Jefferson. Like, whenever you talk about Hamilton in history, you cannot do it without talking about Jefferson, too, because the two were such, like, it it was such a a dichotomy of you were a Hamiltonian or you were a Jeffersonian, and those were the first two political parties. That That is how our American political system got started, was just two yeah. camps yeah. within they the are the reason we have a two-party system yeah oh that, that, that is literally the reason we have a two-party system well yeah. and i i think i mean just the the way hamilton shows history is is very fascinating too because i mean it, it is a very romanticized version of history we we are not getting unbiased depictions of these people in any yeah. way shape or form oh yeah but i i think it, it, it's fascinating just the way they they depict certain things like like the way they depict the the first political parties the the federalists and the democratic republicans and you you see inklings of of both political parties in uh, of like both the federalists and the democratic republicans in today's democrats and republicans and it, it it shows you how we're having a lot of the the same fights today, and how different those fights are today. Yeah, like because because I mean in in the speeches in the speeches Hamilton gives, uh, one minute you can see him you know fighting for for the the rights of the people, and you know. The, the the everyman and then the next you can see him hooking up wall street and you know it, it, yeah. it's very it's very interesting i know one thing i did um kind of backtracking a little bit to how like burr is the antagonist yeah. but you know jefferson was always kind of his really arch enemy in a lot of ways one one like plot element i obviously have in real life as well to a certain degree 
was how when Burr was running against Jefferson and and uh Hamilton endorses Jefferson instead. Yeah. Like I love that moment, especially when Burr oh, like yeah. how betrayed he feels. Like like I, like he, like Burr knows that like they aren't really friends anymore, but he's like Bro, well, I, like I, I was your first friend and you specifically said fuck you to me so I couldn't be president. I, I'm I'm paraphrasing the line here, but I, I really love that line of like Jefferson has beliefs, Burr has none. Yeah. And I I just love how like like how much depth they give Burr because like he yeah. like you can tell how betrayed he feels. Like mm-hmm. like he he still thought there was like even though obviously they bashed heads for years and like weren't really close friends like they used to be like but he still thought there was some kind of like like oh he'll he hates jefferson more than me at least like he'll respect our old friendship and like yeah. endorse me so i can be president and then he didn't like you can tell like just how betrayed he felt and like I felt oh yeah was powerful and i i and think it's also i i do think that 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 part shows a lot of aaron burr's humanity and his own like complexities but it also reinforces the the sort of character that he has constructed for himself of he is so reliant on planning out every single move that he never even took into account the fact that Hamilton would be willing to back his arch enemy over Burr yeah like that that never once crossed burr's mind yeah but like i I really love how much focus they do give burr on it like and they don't just paint him as the guy who killed hamilton because that's how he's seen in history yeah yeah Uh, is like oh he's just the asshole who killed hamilton but he was a founding father he did do a lot for this nation. he did more than just kill hamilton until hamilton the musical came out i feel like a lot of people didn't really recognize that like he actually did play a pretty large role and the founding of our nation as well. Friendly reminder, Aaron Burr was the the first vice president to not become president. Yeah, it's true. Because he shot Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. Why, why well, don't well, vice presidents still do that today? It's a like shame. Kill Hamilton? Really. <laughs> yes. All right, why don't we all just kill Hamilton? We've had some vice presidents become president. Hopefully we'll have one in November. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little political here, getting spicy. Um, the the, the Brute Neighbors podcast does not endorse any uh, political candidate um, except uh, Joe Biden. Um, except, except Joe Biden, yeah, yeah. No, uh, no one else though. You know. Yeah, we don't play favorites except Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> um, okay, something else I, I think it's really important about the the musical is the way. It, depict, it depicts the, the founding of America because we, we have this, this image of it as this, this oh, you know, crusade for, for our rights and w- w- whatever else you're, you're told in history class. But Hamilton does such a, I, I mean, if you're, you're actually watching what they're doing and not listening to whatever is being spouted out of Hamilton's mouth. I mean, it, it, it gives a very realistic depiction of how the revolution was started and happened. It was a bunch of like 20 somethings who wanted to, to cause trouble. And so yeah. they, they were like, Britain's stupid. We're gonna, we're, we're just gonna start a war. And that's what they did. Uh, it, it is always funny when you look at like how many uh very right wing people tend to like bash like the protesters who are like in their twenties yeah. and stuff. It's it, like, no, that, like, that is but then those same people put the, the founding same fathers energy. on such a pedestal. Yeah, yeah. Like they they put the founding fathers on such a pedestal typically. Yeah, and yeah. It's the yeah, it's the same kind of thing. And like whether you agree well, with the cause or not, it's the exact the, same energy and and fighting for what you believe in. Though most most right wingers would absolutely be loyalists, they would be on the British's side, and that that was a big thing for me back when I was pretty conservative. I got to a point where I was like, I understand if I was alive during the Revolutionary War, I would have sided with Britain. 
just mm-hmm. because I I would defer to the authority. Yeah. So um, it's, it's very it, interesting, yeah. like, disconnect there. The same people who praise these, you know, young people who rebelled and, and said, you know, fuck authority, you know, like like the Pennywise song. It's a band, not just the Killer Clown. Um, the, the, the same people will turn around and bash these people who are in a lot of what ways, whether you agree with what they're fighting for or not, are doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. They're fighting for what they believe in, standing up, no matter the, the risk, they are going out there and saying, hey, this is what I believe. We, I think this needs to be changed. Well, it's the same, it's the same those, the, those, uh, something that D- Hamilton does very well is show just how radical of a concept this was, how radical of energy the starting of the United States was. Just th- this revolutionary concept of Literally. we we don't want to uh, do what our our fathers and grandfathers have done for generations. We want to build our own kind of society and right our perceived injustices. Yeah, that's 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 one th- that's what America is built on. It's not just yeah. blindly following tradition. It's yeah, yeah. about well, and recognizing issues and then trying to fix them and do better for both ourselves and our and future generations. Th- that's that's something that's always affected my my view on patriotism. I feel like there there's sort of a a, a certain mindset or a, a certain image that that pops into someone's head when you think about people who who use a lot of or like use a lot of bald eagle imagery or have american flags plastered all over everything and, and it, 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 i think there is kind of th- this hesitancy to to use public displays of patriotism because of you know the ugly things that often come along with it but i i feel as though you know people people should be patriotic people should have bald eagles and flags and all that and and put all that out there but only if they also believe in the ideals that those things stand for bettering the injustices that exist in our society, trying to create a better world to live in, helping your fellow man, fighting for actual liberty and not to just making yourself richer and better off. Yeah. A lot of people have, have taken those things as kind of twisted the meaning as like a weird traditionalist aesthetic when that's yeah. not what those things have ever symbolized. Yeah. Like from inception of the flag it was about rebellion and no matter the cost fighting for what you believe in and yeah. and and no matter what anyone else says and it, it's never been about tradition that's the exact opposite of that yeah uh, um so yeah <laughs> what's your favorite song from hamilton <laughs> I, don't, I, so I, I hope i can use some of that i hope i can use some of that but i'm gonna have to really I, cut and yeah. slice some stuff um my favorite song i so I really like You'll Be Back. I really like uh, Right Hand Man. I really like The Room Where It Happened. That, that, that was just catchy. That's the one I, yeah. I, I catch myself just singing and referencing the most, probably. But number one would have... Oh, and Nonstop. God, I love Nonstop. Number one would have to be Wait For It. Mm-hmm. Such a powerful song. and. Uh, like as, as I've already explained, very relatable for me. I I'm a big fan of a uh, Ten Dual Commandments. Really? Okay. It's very badass in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, and I love. It's just such a good build up, and and it it really uh, like the first time that song happens is because uh, like you know it has a couple reprises, but like it it really the the the, the first duel. Like when it first happened, seems kind of inconsequential because like it's not directly affecting Hamilton, but like it really sets a you know foreshadows several events that come, including you know the finale. 
Yeah. Um, but like it, it really sets a, an undertone for the whole thing when that first duel happens. Kind of it gives you this. Oh, it's a weird form of of world building, and and that it like shows like like these are the rules of the duel. This is how it goes, and then you that's what you expect to happen and to follow and then those things get subverted later on and it, 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 it's really effective it's a surprisingly effective song that i feel like just doesn't get enough credit because it, it really between um philip's duel <laughs> me and uh i die and then you know hamilton's duel it, it really sets that tone that keeps getting revisited uh, as far as the duels go, and the duels are incredibly important, obviously, too. Yeah. Plot. So I'm just uh, a, a very large fan of that song, and it just it sounds cool. Number one. Ba 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 ba. Number two. Ba 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 ba. I I completely forgot to. Guns and ships is in my top three, absolutely. Uh, but then it it ends with uh, Lafayette uh, Lafayette's bit. Oh, yeah. It's like, everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting Frenchman, Lafayette. Yeah. Guns and ships, and soon the balance shifts. I, I really like, um, in the, in, on Disney Plus and everything, like, and I, I, the original actor who plays him, I really like the actor who plays Jefferson. He fucking yes. kills that one. And he also oh, played yeah. Lafayette, I believe. Well, it's, um, it's, like, yeah. He fucking has so much swag as uh, Jefferson. He's d- so... D- feed- uh, De- uh, David Diggs. Yeah. Yeah. He's well, great. Like, he has I, so much charm. Dripping uh, charm. Yeah. I, th- that's something else that kind of ch- was so different on my viewing of the soundtrack versus actually watching the musical was my, my feelings on different things completely changed. Like, in this, listening to the soundtrack... Uh, I didn't really like Jefferson very much, and Burr was one of my favorite characters. And actually watching it, I I I didn't like Burr as much. I didn't think he was as compelling really? visually. Um, but but David Diggs just absolutely blew blew me away. And it it was so surprising too because I as as a historical figure i can't stand jefferson i have always disliked jefferson um and i just thought he was such a compelling character i I would say he is my favorite actor in the whole play i'd agree Uh, the only one who comes close would be chris jackson who plays washington oh he also does great most of the acting is incredible uh well, well i'm gonna go ahead and go to the controversial bit Okay. Um, um, Lin Manuel Miranda, if you're listening, I think you're a very talented man. Uh, you know, Can't I think you're a great writer. Uh, two 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 prong foot thing. One's gonna be like fine, and then the other one is gonna be kind of rude. First off, yeah, he can't sing well. He really like I didn't notice it, and then I had people point it out to me. Like, yeah, no, he can't sing very well. It's like, yeah, he really like I, I listened for it when I watched it, and like, yeah, he he murders those notes harder than Burr <laughs> murdered Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Woof! <laughs> like, ooh, some of those notes are rough, man. Yeah. Ooh, and like, sure, like character well, singing, he, and like for some of it, he's it got works. a very distinctive voice. It's it is very like objectively speaking, the voice is weird. It's funky, <laughs> but yeah. like, th- there are points where you forget about it. Just because that is the the Hamilton voice, yeah. Like he's he, when you look at it as the character, like it, you can kind of give the character singing argument. Mm-hmm. But like, and like when he raps, he's fine. But like when he's like full on singing, ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. And then uh, also, I'm now, now I'm just gonna be rude. Uh, he's not an attractive man, that Lin Manuel Miranda. I don't. I don't understand. Like, I've met a lot of people who like think he's like super attractive, and I don't get it. He's 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 especially in the Disney Plus version of Hamilton. I don't know. I don't like him how he looks. <laughs> um. So 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 anyway, uh, on to stage design. I I think <laughs> I can't believe the design Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> I'm Lin Manuel Miranda. I'm sorry. That was rude, but I I yeah. 
I don't think anyone's personal looks have any effect on whether or not they are an effective performer. Maybe if you sung better, I would. <laughs> I'm just going to rip into Lynn Mello Miranda. And uh, I, I know I'm not good looking either, Lynn Mello Miranda. But, you know, I'm sorry, man. We'll, we'll, well be ugly when, together. He's, when he's no Ron our, our podcast gets canceled because uh, Lynn Mel- Manuel Miranda rightfully hates us, you know. Just me. Just me. I think you're beautiful, Lynn. Don't ever change. <laughs> he looks good in, like, other things. It's just in Hamilton, he looks, I don't know what it is. It, not, not an appealing man to look at in, in Hamilton specifically <laughs> I love how shook you are by this <laughs> there, is there anything else you uh, you have to talk about uh, I think I'm done insulting one male Miranda he's a oh, very okay, talented good. man he, you know, he, yeah. he's, a good, he's a good writer yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's uh, about all I got it, well, I don't know why they killed off their main character at the end they should have kept Alexander alive that would have been yeah, cool. like what about the sequel you know I where's my Hamilton 2 Hamilton 2 electric boogaloo Probably. I was honestly I, I think a burr like faced side musical could be interesting yeah like, like just it basically be Hamilton because like burr already gets so much attention yeah. It'd just be kind of a mostly slight changes, but it'd be interesting. I I think I think a, a Jefferson sort of musical would be interesting. You um, know, there's been talks about like uh if Lynn Manuel Miranda was interested in like doing musicals for the other founding fathers. I don't know if anything came yeah. of that, but Yeah, yeah. Well something something that's something I, I've thought a lot about uh is being able to to do a musical about the the revolutionary war just because of the way it has been sort of posited in our society and how much distance we have from the actual events of of you know people fighting and dying for the the start of this country that that you know, a, a relatively speaking lighthearted musical can be can be made about it. Uh, while, while I was watching it, I just kept on thinking like, there is no way you could do a musical like this for, say, the Civil War. Uh, b- b- because e- even though like a lot of things being fought over and a lot of the subjects are are just as you know, just as controversial, just as dire as they were at the time of the Revolutionary War. I mean, those, the, the, the Civil War is still such a, a hot button issue in our country right now, which, which yeah. is insane to think, like, like, how crazy is it that it is still too soon to, to explore the civil war in that kind of a way yeah and like i mean because like there's that show that was supposed to happen that was like a uh yeah. alternate uh history like, fictional yeah. yeah where this like the confederacy one and like well and it wasn't I, gonna see, paint them in a positive light yeah like, i don't understand well, it, why there was back from yeah I, I well and i i think that would have been i mean i thought that would have been a really cool series but it, it's it's kind of like it would have kind of been like man in the high castle yeah but the 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 the, the difference being that not many people would watch man in the high castle and be like this is the way the world should be but unfortunately we we've been reminded recently that there are people who would watch this show and and like still think like, oh, yeah this is fine yeah yeah yeah, unfortunately, you're right. Um, I, I'm I'm hoping that sometime in our lifetime, uh, like 50 years down the road, I I I I don't think this is actually going to happen, but I like to think so. I like I like to think maybe in like 50 years we'll be at a point in our society where we can actually, you know, explore the 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 societal societal impact of the Civil War without people like you know trying to argue that slavery and and slavers were okay 
our country's fucked up, man. The fact that we yeah. still have people like that is insane. It's ridiculous. We talk about the Civil War a lot on this podcast. Yeah. It's come up a lot. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> This is this is all just uh, you know I, I I'm dropping breadcrumbs for the impending civil war. I, I want this podcast to be used as a primary source of how present the topic of the civil war was in the years leading up to the second civil war. Ah um, yes, well yes. we're calling it here, guys. We're we're going to be on the historical record. We're going to be in textbooks. Boom. <laughs> Like, wow, these two random podcasters, uh, they called it. Like, they knew it. They knew it. Yikes. Fuck, man. Yeah, Hamilton is, is quite good. Uh, yeah. Would you Pro say Hamilton. it's like one of your favorite musicals? Or yeah. What the, the, the only musical I would say I, I like more than it is probably Hades Town. I've only listened to about half of Hades Town. I need to finish listening to it. I wouldn't. I don't know what I would say my favorite musicals are. Like, I, I've mostly only seen film musicals. I haven't seen. Yeah that many stage ones mm-hmm. i know we joke about cats 2019 and rightfully so but I, I did see the stage performance when i was a kid it was my first like theater show i ever saw and i do have mm-hmm. a soft spot in my heart for it spam a lot is great it's the musical version of uh money python and the holy grail it's surprisingly great uh i've always been a big sweeney todd fan there's not enough horror-esque musicals i think uh, horror musicals are an untapped genre that we need more of no. Hamilton's really good, though. It's uh, I definitely enjoy it. I I am pro Hamilton, I, and I am pro Lin Lin Manuel Miranda. I'm sorry if I offended you, Lin Manuel Miranda. You are a talented soul. I I am Lovely. I am pro uh, Hamilton. I am pro Lin Manuel Miranda, and I always have been. <laughs> um, I think you have a beautiful soul, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, probably gonna cut all this or not who knows or not but i was like man I'm, i was gonna give these guys funding too yeah pro pro hamilton good stuff a lot of musical if you haven't seen it it's on disney plus if you have disney plus go check it out it's a good time good stuff all right seth what do you got for me for uh mystery thingy of the, the week i'm so excited i i have not watched this in in months so it might be complete, or it might be completely different from what I'm expecting it to be. This could be racy. This could be fun. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, so I'm going to do something completely different from what I was was planning on doing. Uh, okay, you built up the other thing so much, though. Yeah, don't Uh-oh. worry. This will this will be just as. Uh... No, no. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do the original thing. Um, Make up your damn mind. No, I won't. Do both. Okay. A double feature. Rapid fire round. Do I do it from the, the time stamp or for the whole nine minutes? Uh, the whole nine minutes. Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus, take the wheel. All right. I'll be back in ten minutes, I guess. All right, Seth, why don't you tell the audience uh, what you just made me watch? Okay, well, what we just watched was a uh, it, it was a reimagining um, of a sort of promotional video from the 1920s promoting the United Mine Workers Association, uh, which was a, a big miner, miners union back in the day and is it is well, I thought you had to be at least 18 to start a union. What? <laughs> we're, we're starting said, a union? No, I said you, you said it was a miners union. I said I thought you had to be at least 18 to start a union. I can't stand you. <laughs> um, I got jokes. But but it was about it was about the Battle of Matawan, which if you're unfamiliar, uh, is a, a true historical event in which the these private agents were hired by a mine company to to kick workers families off of off of the property and like essentially punish workers for 
going against the company line. And what, what happened in the Battle of Madawan was uh, the sheriff of the town saw that these agents were, were trying to kick the family out of their homes and stopped them, was like, you, you can't do that. And a, a shootout emerged between these private company agents and the sheriff and, and mayor of uh, the town. And the mayor got shot and killed. Um, and th that, is, that is a major historical event uh, in the, the history of labor rights in this country, in the history of the coal wars in this country. Very significant and very unknown to most of the American populace. Uh, before I dive into the actual uh, video, I, I, I do want to just point out, I find it funny how we went from me last week showing us the Lonely Island, and this week we're talking about labor rights in America. Yeah. Well, okay, so so I I think it's important to to note that like after that event of of the video, you guys are going. If you guys haven't watched the video yet, go watch it right now. Uh, stop it right here and, and go watch it because everything hey, I say from back, this please. point. We need you. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is after Spencer, come back. <laughs> um, so so. Sid Hatfield was the the sheriff of that town and after that point he became famous for you know being a, a defender of the workers and uh you know it, he was tied up in and uh, he, he became sort of the face of the union uh the face for for defending the miners in the area but he also came over uh, under all of these big um lawsuits from that private company the the baldwin felts agency and during one of the court cases in which he had to defend himself a bunch of the agents essentially sprung on him on the steps outside of the courthouse and and shot and assassinated him Jesus. um yeah and that led to a bunch of just a bunch of directions from miners who were like okay so the company doesn't care about our our safety and well-being and now they're killing the people who do care about our safety and well-being and it all culminated in this event called the battle of blair mountain which if you're unfamiliar with it was the largest armed skirmish in the united states since the civil war Wow. Um, it happened in 1921 in West Virginia, and it was a bunch of coal miners out on a mountain fighting against the coal company who was coming in to end this, to break this strike. A bunch of people died. It was a, a very bloody bat battle. The, the president of the United States, Warren G. Harding, threatened to send in troops against these coal miners. And uh, I mean, Harding was kind of an asshole. <laughs> yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the coal wars in America, that is that is a a frequent theme of the companies the the company teaming up with the government to fight against the workers who are trying to, you know, have more you know restrictions on what could be done to them. So 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 anyway, yeah. Give me give me your your thoughts on uh, the the video. Well, it, it was definitely interesting. I wasn't expecting to to watch a fucking silent film today, but uh, I, I definitely I I'm glad you you you, you did mention that it, it was a reimagination of the actual yeah. film because I noticed like halfway through I was like that that looks like a modern building. What the fuck? And then like I saw some of the actors and I'm like I don't no nah, they don't like the, the, this looks like their clothing looks like artificial like it doesn't look actually time yeah i want to say it's it's it was create this video was created sometime in the last like 20 years yeah um, it looked like maybe not necessarily a student short film but i, I could um, very easily see it being a, a student film project but like a very a very well done student film project yeah. The, the, like I, it, it took me about halfway through to even like realize like that it wasn't like an actual like from the time like I, I mean I wasn't really looking for it but like it was yeah it, it was about halfway through that I was finally like wait a minute this might not actually be something from like the twenties so like I mean credit for it 
them making something that believable for that long. It was interesting. It was definitely a little cheesy. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Whether it was a recreation or the original short film, typically those kind of things are. But, like, you know, it was very, it was interesting. You know, you, you got mm-hmm. the basic plot points of the, you know, historical event. You got the little bullet points here and there. They, they kind of just threw Sid in there. There wasn't much of an introduction. Suddenly he was their hero after just existing. And I was like, oh, okay. Apparently he's, like, it was like four minutes in. It's like, oh yeah, and then Sid, he was cool. And I'm like, okay, we finally met the title character. He hasn't done anything, but sure. Yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was very cheesy at times. Like, ah, yes, we will arrest him. If not, then we'll use this. <laughs> so man on gun on the desk. Pull, pulls out gun. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, okay, that escalated quickly. Mm. Like, he had money at first. I thought he was going to, like, try and bribe Sid. It's like, no, we're going to arrest him, and then we're going to fucking kill him. It's like, you're not even going to try any other avenues here? No, just straight? Nope. Okay. There, 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 there are two options. He you goes along with him. it, or he <laughs> dies. Uh, you know, no, no in-betweens. No, no shades of gray. You know, um, yeah. there's, something, there's something to be said about a time like that. When the world was black and white. Uh, what, what do you think typically, segueing off of this a little bit, what do you yeah. think typically of black and white films? I, it, it depends. Um, because I, b- black and white can be very difficult to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there are a lot of black and white films that I, I love but I can't say that I, I go out of my way for black and white a lot. And particularly yeah. silent films are extremely yeah. difficult to watch. There, there's a, quite a few silent films that I know I need to watch just for the history. Yeah. But like, because like Battleship Patink, Patink, Patinkin, that's silent, isn't it? I can't remember. But like, I, either way, I haven't watched it, but I know I need to three hour possibly silent film and i'm like Ugh. Well, i i I've, I've always thought uh, i ne- i've needed to watch metropolis i've tried i got about halfway through yeah it's good it's just it's like i, I can barely watch charlie chaplin films either but like a i'm not a huge fan of slapstick and b like the fact that the most of well, his early ones at least are silent like uh like uh modern times and stuff it's just it's, it's very hard for me to get into silent. I can do black and white films. Yeah. Uh, typically, I used to not be able to, but like, I've realized more and more that like, a lot of them have aged better than you think, especially yeah. comedies. Like, I've noticed a lot of comedy black and white films still work perfectly fine. Like, uh, yeah. To Be or Not to Be, the original version from like the '40s, is a black mm-hmm. and white comedy film about. It's a comedy film about World War II that was made during World War II. And it's just, it was just as controversial at the time as you can imagine that it would be. But it's, it's really funny. Like it, the comedy holds up very, very well. And there's also genuine bits of emotion there too, because it is, even though it is a comedy film, it is in such a heavy time, both the subject matter and the time that it was made. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very good film, highly recommend it. And then, you know, it's black and white and it's aged very well. Same with uh, Marx Brothers films, like Duck Soup has aged very well. And even outside of comedies, like Twelve Angry Men, is uh, fantastic. Oh yeah, um, uh, Kill a Mockingbird, Citizen, Citizen Kane, uh, Casablanca, Psycho. Yeah, all all hold up very well. And then there, it's always interesting when modern films choose to be black and white. Like I don't know if you yeah. saw it, but uh, The Lighthouse came out last year. I I did not see it. It's very good. I don't know if it'd be up your alley or not. It's very bizarre, mm. but I enjoyed it yeah. a lot. But like he chose to make it black and white, and it fits very, very well. Like yeah. what, you know, it's was, about these two guys. What's up? Was Roma black and white? It was. Yeah, Roma was yeah. also black and white. Roma Lighthouse. Uh, I haven't seen it, but the artist that yeah, won that, the picture a few the, years ago. That was big. Uh, best picture picture like a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. It was mostly silent too, to my knowledge. I think it only had like one line of dialogue. No. Yeah, it's always interesting. Schindler's List. How, Schindler's how List? could we forget Schindler's List? Absolutely. I uh, Schindler's List. I I think that's it especially well because it's mostly black and white. Like, yeah. It has that you know the the little red coated girl, and that's yeah. so powerful. Um, because you you just watched that for the first time recently, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had I had a friend of mine who I was watching it with who mentioned that the first time he ever watched Schindler's List, he he was very young and like didn't recognize any of the actors and and genuinely thought it was from the time period for oh, for really? a, a good portion of the movie. I'm, you know, it's always interesting when you remember that that like that's Liam Neeson. Yeah. Like you don't think of Liam Neeson like typically I feel like now our perception of Liam Neeson is, you know, an action star. Like you think, yeah. you know, fucking taken and he was quite gone in Star Wars, yeah. Like you don't think yeah, he was Schindler. <laughs> An amazing performance, by the way. He did phenomenally. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you, I feel like we've kind of forgotten that like he can be a very good dramatic actor. Yeah, no black and white films, I think. I, I, I understand why some people are averse to them, but like, I feel like you just need to look for the right ones because some of them are very boring. But that's more about the film itself, I would say, than mm-hmm. anything to do with the fact that it's black and white or even the time period. Well, and and I, I can... I, I think something that's really helped me do black and white... Um, and this might just be my experience, but uh, watching black and white TV shows, because like I, I watched a ton of, I mean, I've watched all of Doctor Who and I've watched a ton of it when it's in black and white. Mm-hmm. And you, you get to a point where you're just like, you are able to appreciate the art for how, how it was. And, and be able to to gain you you stop thinking of it as oh i'm watching something in black and white Are you and, and it really transcends it and, and the same with uh sitcoms like the dick yeah. van dyke show or andy griffith's show yeah i was about to bring that up actually like i didn't, I didn't even think about it so you brought up black and white tv but like yeah. a lot of shows i watched growing up were black and white sitcoms like uh yeah. leave it to beaver andy griffith gilligan's island Lu- i love yeah. lucy a lot of them did switch to color but they all started out black and white. And I, I remember like watching them as a kid and then like, like Gilligan's Island about halfway through switched to color. And I remember being like rooted out by it. Cause I was like, mm-hmm. what the yeah. fuck? Like there's, I, no, stop, go back to black yeah. and white. Yeah. yeah. Just get so accustomed to it. But yeah, it, it, that was definitely an interesting film. I, I, I don't know much about the history of labor unions. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Uh, well, how much I can contribute on that, but it, 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 it I, I do appreciate that they, whoever made this, had the, like, it, it's a strange thing to, like, say, hey, I want to remake this union film from, like, the 20s, just on a whim in the 2000s, like, that's, I, I, I kind of, I respect that, that they went out of their way to recreate this, and, like you can tell, like they 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 definitely have passion for it. And yeah, well, and and they they clearly knew a lot about what they were were creating. Yeah, like, they did their whoever research. Whoever it was had done their research. Yeah. So, like, uh, props to to whoever made this, and uh, hopefully they're they're continuing to make stuff because, like, I think that's that's awesome that they had the uh, the passion for. You know, the, whatever you have a passion for, if you if you're a filmmaker, fucking make that shit, man. Like, if, if your passion well, is twenties labor unions for minors, then absolutely make your fucking short I, film, man. I think it, it's important to note not only did they do their research on the subject matter, but how much research went into the actual production of the video too, because you you yeah. watch that video and and you mentioned if you don't know any better or like you you aren't paying too much attention you believe it's 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 from that time period because yeah, there, there is halfway through that I, yeah that I there is such an attention to to the the clothing the uh characters wear. there is attention to the filming style of these videos the the way that it was edited the way that the camera looks even even the shots like just action shots of of miners shoveling coal into a a, a mine car like yeah. it looks genuine it looks it, it looks like they're getting raw footage of somebody in a mine yeah no they did a very good job of recreating this because I mean, like they because it, it from what i gathered from the description stuff it's like it was a lost film so like they didn't really have yeah. 
anything to work off of other than like a description and, and such and maybe some still frames right yeah 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 so like that's pretty impressive that they were able to recreate something with such a level of i mean obviously i can't watch the original film because it's you know a lost film mm -hmm. but to what i presume to be relative accuracy and, and clearly as i said lots of passion went into this so it's very it was, it was an interesting watch it was interesting not what I was expecting to watch this week. What was your other thing? <laughs> what were you gonna... I, I, uh, well, no, I can't use it for the next time I, I do it because it's relatively similar in just sort of tone and. Is it gonna be another silent short black and white short film? Uh, I was going to do the part of the episode of uh, Mister Rogers Neighborhood from the the ep the day that bobby kennedy was assassinated and oh. they're explaining the assassination to kid to kids again i love we went from fucking andy samberg to exactly labor uh, unions and the, the death of bobby kennedy <laughs> i mean it, it it hey look it's it's a conversation starter I, you're not wrong don't worry next week audience i will bring back fun topics no no more fun <laughs> fun is dead only depression and sadness. Also, uh, you know, hey, uh, viva la revolution. Uh, we we should we should take better care of our our workers in this country. Not throwing away my shot at helping the workers and the animals. Yeah, the animals. Oh, that wow, we take. There, there was a running theme here. Um. Yeah, it's weirdly like political podcast yeah even with the even with breakfast food it was, uh, even with breakfast foods we're murdering our, our people our animals yeah. and those musical notes if you're Lynn manuel miranda <laughs> uh, Lynn manuel's gonna sue me yeah wow we, we've managed to to piss off everybody this episode Peter, yeah, yeah. Lynn manuel conservative we're not pissing somebody off uh, in an episode of our podcast we're not doing it right you know we, we, yeah. we've bashed rush limbaugh we've bashed, bashed uh uh people who like ramen or no uh what was it what kind of cup ramen people like cup ramen. yeah yeah we always we always find somebody to bash you know punching down that's a good sign of, of good healthy comedy right <laughs> oh yeah jesus if, Christ. if you if you are not tearing down other people <laughs> then yeah, are you really fulfilling your life? You know, are you really doing what you need to do? Yeah. Just like uh, Bill Murray. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. We, we got to leave Bill Murray alone. He's a national <laughs> treasure. Okay. No, I will not stand for Bill Murray bashing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill Murray. You better be. You didn't even say anything, but even bring his name into this. You do not touch Bill Murray. <laughs> Keep his name out of your mouth. <laughs> You don't deserve to speak his name. <sighs> All right, what are we talking about next week? So that's like actually, we we didn't give a teaser last week. We gotta we gotta give the audience a little something. S stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're gonna talk about the, 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 the Taylor Swift's new album, Folklore. No, no. I'd rather talk about The Martian again. <laughs> the Martian again. Just every week we start, just anytime we can't agree on something to talk about, we just talk about the Martian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Let's do, um... <sighs> there was something I had in mind. I don't remember. I, I want to do something that I'm anti. What is something we both hate? All right, should we do something that's that we both hate, or should we do something spicy that we'll fight over? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, I, I want to do Ab. I, I think we should do Abbey Road for our our media. Oh, so uh, do the Beatles? Okay, we yeah. do the Beatles. And let's talk about random word generator. Here we go. Swords. <laughs> but I'm pro swords. I'm also pro swords. How about gravel? <laughs> gravel. Gravel. I don't have anything against gravel either. Reflection. <laughs> Reflect. I, do, I okay. do hate my reflection. Correct. Decade. Decade. Uh, March. Month of March. We could do a month. That would be, that could actually be fun. Yeah. Uh, What's your least favorite month? Yeah. 
That's what I'm trying to think of. Honestly, I feel like I'm not a big March fan. Yeah. February kind of sucks. March usually March usually has St. Patrick or a spring break. Spring <laughs> break's usually fun. Usually. You don't get spring breaks anymore, though, Seth. That's true. Bro, so what, what has March done for me lately? Jack shit. No. All right, next week we're going to talk about months. March. But months. <laughs> the concept in general. I'm sure, fuck it. We'll talk about months and we'll talk about uh, okay. Abbey Road, the Beatles album, and probably subsequently the Beatles. And a uh, random thing that I have decided for once. I already know what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you. X going to give it to you. I'm X. Hi, X. You're, All right. your, mom, your mom's X. Shit. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Anyway, that's been our podcast, guys. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, this we is a weird tone, this podcast. Love you all. Love you, Spencer. Absolutely. Thanks for um, being our only I fan. Per- particularly, I love you, Spencer, passionately. <laughs> Thank you for supporting us in our endeavors. Yes. Share with all your friends. All, all. All of them. That's why all of our views are just Spencer being like, hey, please, these guys are desperate. Help them out. <laughs> they need all they can get. It's just me. I'm keeping their channel afloat. All right, We're going to be famous. For Bashman and, 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 and Miranda. And Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lin-Manuel was actually one of our subscribers. Not anymore. And he, yeah, he, he actually unfollowed us. <laughs> unsubscribed. All right. The fucking, we got to end this. This is wacky. This is a weird one. All right. Bye. Jesus Christ. Bye, friends.